Hi, I'm Aaron Barnes, and this is The Bigger Picture. Today we're talking about the African founding father of the great state of California, William Alexander Leidestor. Now, if you don't recognize the name, don't worry. That's what we're here for. So William was born on the beautiful island of St. Croix in the Caribbean in the early 1800s. He's a product of an interracial union. His mother was African-Caribbean and his father was Danish. As I'll try to cover, William was sort of a jack-of-all-trades, or a bill-of-all-trades, if you will, a renaissance man of the Wild West. Uh, but before he got to the West Coast, a young William sailed to the port of New Orleans where he began his first career in maritime trade. Actually, as a captain, William was quite successful. He captained ships between New Orleans and New York. Over a short period of time, he became a very famous captain in that area. Before we go any further, I know what you're thinking, right? How did a black man in the Deep South become such a captain in a port like New Orleans? After four years of successful captaining, Leidesdorf was forced to leave the port of New Orleans because of something called the Negro Seamen Acts which made for nasty environmental conditions for all seamen of color. So, as you might have guessed, he had to leave the Port of New Orleans, but he wasn't sidetracked by this small inconvenience. By the time he was 30, William Leidersdorf had sailed around Cape Horn to go to exotic locations like California, Hawaii, and Alaska, before eventually making his home in the modern-day Bay Area. Side note, we have to remember that California at this time was still a part of Mexico. You know, America didn't just come up on California like, oh my God, look what we found. Actually, that's what America does all of the time. But during this time, Leidersdorf had settled in a Mexican territory and as such became a Mexican citizen. That's important for later, but just hold on to that information for now. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here because we have to appreciate the foresight that William Leidersdorf had to see the potential well before the gold rush of Silicon Valley in the rich Bay Area, right? He took his business in seafaring and expanded his opportunities into warehousing and hospitality by building the area's first hotel, commercial shipping warehouse. I mean, he built a steamboat that operated in the San Francisco Bay and along the Sacramento River that still sets precedent today. This guy was truly a visionary and a pioneer in the West Coast. Leidesdorf enjoyed a ton of success in all of his businesses. And even though he was a part of Mexican-ruled California, he's still widely considered today as the first African-American millionaire. He was also very active in California's political scene while it was still a military state. As the United States first black vice consul to Mexico, Leidesdorp helped American troops during the Sonoma Rebellion of 1846. He continued his public service in California after he became an official American state by serving as president of the San Francisco School Board, a member of the first black council, and he helped develop the Wall Street of the West by serving as the city's first treasurer. This is a black man doing this. You have to keep all of this in mind. This guy is leading the charge in one of our union's most productive states. This guy was leading in nearly every category and was making tons of money doing so. Oh, the irony in the fact that the Declaration of Independence was read in William Alexander Leidesdorf's house, okay? A black man's house. And this is where they read the declaration that people were free as they were in the rest of the Union, which we know was a lie because slavery was still real. But they read the Declaration of Independence in his house. Do you want to see his house? Would you like to go visit this historic location? Sorry, like almost every other historical important event or location in black history, it was lost in fire. For all of his contributions, the California State Legislature now recognizes Leidesdorf as one of California's state founders. This is an amazing accomplishment and acknowledgement from the California State Legislature to admit that a black man was responsible, at least in part, for California even joining the states. Although he had no children of his own to carry a genetic legacy, Leidesdorf's life teaches us the values of being able to pivot career paths, see potential in the unknown, and then give back in public service in various roles to put yourself out there and see what benefits can net you. It should not go unsaid how important it was that Leidesdorf was available to serve the people of California. In these ways and in so much more, Leidesdorf helps us see the bigger picture. Thanks for watching.